Hello Fresh! So Transformers Siege has all but come and gone at this point. Everything's out, it was pretty great, and it's already being muscled off the shelves by its successor, which must mean we've reached the stage of the generation's marketing cycle when they release a flaky subpar CG internet show just one short year after the line peaked. Yes indeed, the Transformers Siege Netflix original anime premieres this very day, instantly dating this video and looking like a right barrel of laughs, with trailers suggesting a grim tone, bleak visuals, and all the maudlin war is hell misery that kids and adults despise alike. But here's the thing, what if it's good? Stay with me. Look, I know we all saw how the Prime Wars trilogy came out, all right? And I know we all know YouTube thrives on thing bad, but I do like Transformers. I crave quality official Transformers content. I can't wait to be blown away by compelling Cybertronian stories. I do want Transformers stuff to be good. I mean, by the time this video goes live, we'll all have insta-binged the entire thing anyway, and we'll know that it was had its moments. But as of the time of filming, God, we need something. Anyway, the Siege story very much appears to follow a pretty traditional Transformers formula, Transformula, with the Autobots waging their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons, led by the maniacal Megatron in full Warlord mode, having apparently conquered Cybertron using POV Extreme Wet Mouth Sounds ASMR. And what this all means for my little show is that his excellent 2018 Siege figure is relevant again! Monthly Megatron! May not actually be monthly. So as is Siege's want, this manky looking Megalon meat bag cuts a respectably killer figure with a classically styled G1-ish design replete with a hyper-modern Astro alt mode. And I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I didn't like it at first. I mean, I didn't hate it, I wasn't mad. I was just like, Neh. But now, I don't know what the problem was. He's great! Cause check it out, the vibe is very much all business uber villain Megatron. This is not cheeky Saturday morning Megatron hatching silly Energon laundering schemes and whimsically tripping over Starscream. This is a serious face Megatron who will A, indoctrinate you into his murder cult, or B, murder you. Either way, Somebody getting murdered. Anyway, he's certainly built like a bad guy, going super hard on the heavy set brawn bod style and stern, stocky stodginess. I love his giant, filthy grey body slab bearing down on you like a pain wall. He really looks invincible, you know? Bulletproof, like he's made of concrete. Like even his cartoony core control panel and sensual black undies can't dispel the overwhelming smell of murdery hell. Heads a diabolical doom dome, fully complicit in the eyebrow concern. Conspiracy. And the face is beat for the gods in a subtle silver with cheeky contours, and like, I guess he has actually got those luscious love lips. Although they are admittedly merely an echo of his on-screen snoggle. Not a lot of neck on the go though. Like he can look around well enough, but it's all very scrunched, like he's all shoulders. Backpack's kind of a lot and all. Like a pair of gigantic scorched Flintstones beefsteaks chilling on the rack. I feel like it's kind of okay, like it's the only spot with any kibble. The rest of him's so tidy. I I feel like this is probably fine. Carry on, great work. Anyway, the arms are similarly big and serious, with these beefy bicep blocks, cheeky faux trigger shoulders, and jubilant jointage. The wrists are a bit of a bummer with these huge empty hand voids and pesky peekaboo weapon ports. Well, I don't think they're bad enough to actively ruin it, but not great. Legs, again, big and serious, with huge hefty hate shins and wonderful wedge feet. Again, there is some emptitude, and the ankles are plenty peculiar, like they've got this odd tilt section which can be reluctant to snap into place, but like the heels are super helpful. Knee joints are nuts, and I feel like Siege's dizzying detail work did so much of the heavy lifting. Love these huge circular screw holes, they're so obviously functional, but they've just worked them into the scene. They're a feature now. So physically, Megatron's a fairly fearsome autocratic asshole, and when it comes to weapons, he is not screwing around. Check out the fusion cannon there, looking black and bold and basic, and for once it's not actually permanently attached to his arms, so he can just hold it like a normal gun. Ooh, that doesn't sit right. And brace yourself for a rare appearance from Megatron's giant sword that he has occasionally, but not always for some reason. I call it the sometimes sword. The maybe blade. The blaby. This is some weird shit, man. Like it's trying to be a sword, but it's actually just a thin swordy crust around another cannon, which again would have been cool if it didn't just have some of a sword on it. So it doesn't really work as either. 
make a thing. And while we know that Siege is pretty hot on the whole accessory swap interplay thing, only Megatron would be enough of a bastard to make his mates carry his stuff. Because look at this, you got this little back-mounted gun barrel thing here, which completes the old-school cartoon model look, and also makes a handy hammer handle, but like, it belongs to Soundwave. And it's perplexing, because Soundwave can't do a thing with it. Like, it doesn't suit him or enhance his vibe in any way, so it's gotta be this, right? It's the perfect size and colour, it's got the little notch. It's definitely for Megatron. Oh, Soundwave, you simp. <laughs> Am I using that right? I kinda hope not. is pretty great. The body barely budges, but the backpack really brings it. I love how the legs bend and then spin and hook over the hips, and the arms cheekily fold up to form the turret on this turntable you didn't even know was there, and then the sword slinks through underneath. Amazing. And the alt mode's ace, obviously. Just a savagely solid, straightforward space tank that perfectly encapsulates the spirit of Siege. Sleek and spacey and mean. Like a strikingly stripped down and startlingly direct depiction of Megatron's down and dirty, battle ready side. Yes, indeed. Check this thing out. Tearing up the front lines with twin tapered treads and this twisty terror turret. Love the friggin' dreadnought barrel blasting out the front like a natural extension of the fusion cannon. Which is embedded in the middle there, like Megatron's very heart. Does grind a bit going round, but he's tough. He can take it. And I sort of love that amidst all the weaponry and pure unfiltered threat of this thing, you got this little normal boy headlight section just chilling out in there. Hey man, safety first, all right? Admittedly, it does have a bit of that bloke lying down four crawler energy, especially with his entire unmoved body section and cheeky eyes peeking over, as well as the viciously visible pumps and pants. But overall, it really works. I think this this is genuinely the first classics-esque class-esque Deceptor King that I'd be totally satisfied to call my collection default Megatron. Because much as I've enjoyed most of the other generation's ones, there was always an asterisk. Always something that disqualified them from being retail tier go-to Megatron material. But this one basically nails it. It's like they finally got this idea right. They stripped out all the silly spring-loaded gimmicks and semi-sensical extra modes and dialed down the Cybertron styles just enough to make Megatron a nice clean cyber tank that's streamlined and scary and wants you to know that, yes, somebody getting murdered. So whatever happens with the Netflix show, you gotta hand it to Siege for delivering a best-in-class Big Four Deceptor Squad in gorgeous Voyager scale. If only it hadn't been for those bloody paint jobs. I know, I know we've talked it to death, but it is still a problem. It is still on there. I think that's where my initial stab of frustration came from, because it looks pretty good, but it's just a touch too dark. It's gloomy and dirty and scabby. And you know, they've re-released it for the Netflix tie-in. And it's even gloomier and dirtier and scabbier. It's friggin' Christina scabbier. We've had a select swan based on some unused G2 nonsense, which I notionally appreciate, but don't want. And check out, if you will, this beautiful special edition cell shaded one. This is extremely slick. Like, it's a lot brighter and livelier, and these sunbow-ass light streaks are extremely in tune with the exhausting onslaught of 1980s nostalgia. Can't believe it's still ongoing. I'm gonna ride that till the f wheels fall off. So who am I kidding? This is really cool. But it just still feels a little over stylized when what I'm crying out for is just a normal one. A clean one. And there isn't one. Not yet, anyway. There's mileage in this thing yet, baby. I mean, they didn't stop re-releasing the classics one for like six years, so who knows? Maybe they'll do a splotchy purple and green one as well. But I think I retroactively like this one now, because it's just the most sensible of a very non-sensible bunch. And as a figure, it's just about the ideal modern standard a G1 aesthetic Megatron. Although I'm pretty sure I say that every time they do one. It is always true though. These friggin' Generations Megatrons just get better and better so far. Alright, that's the end of that one. Alright, back on with the Megatron! Uh, before I go, massive thanks to uh, Rudy Gregory over at Shaq's Toys for hooking me up with the uh, Cell Shaded Boy. And massive patron style thanks to Andrew Kelly. Thank you, my friend. See you at Not TF Nation. Be sure to subscribe for more Theo's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.